Alrighty guys, it's me again, and I haven't done a video in a while. So I decided that uh, I wanted to make a video on my Intel Core i7 um, Dell Precision M4500 workstation. Um, this thing has been running long and hard. I've been using it for the past month uh, to do video editing on and run my flight sims. Now. Uh, as you know, anybody that watches the videos, I got this thing a um, month or two ago and um, I had cleaned it all up and, you know, it was my brand new work machine. Well, it's been receiving a lot of use and when I first got it, I replaced the thermal paste in the laptop with some gold flaked, uh, no name brand Chinese crap I got off eBay. And it's been doing the job relatively well. Uh, but it was my no means high end. And um, I've been overclocking this laptop. Uh, the CPU runs at 3.5 gigahertz or 3.3 gigahertz, somewhere around there. But I've been massively overclocking the GPU. And the fans, it's been staying relatively cool. But the fans are working really hard um, when this thing is in games for a long period of time. And so I decided to swap the thermal paste out again uh, with something a bit higher quality. Or something of a bit higher quality. I went with some uh, Arctic Silver Premium Ceramic Thermal Paste. And uh, this stuff was like 10 bucks for, I think... Uh, seven and a half or oh no it was 14 grams so not too bad of a price considering it's arctic silver but i decided to make a video on how to do this because i know a lot of people that are afraid to do this to their laptop for fear of damaging it now i'll admit this one is a hell of a lot easier to do than every other laptop i've ever worked on because it's just one screw to pull this whole bottom cover off and you get access to everything. Now, before you start, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the battery on your laptop. Like so. So take that out and stick it somewhere safe. We're just going to set mine up here. Alrighty. Now, when you do this, you should preferably be and a or on a work surface that's not um, gonna attract static you shouldn't be working on carpet or anything of the sort uh, preferably have an anti-static wrist strap and a rubber mat an anti-static rubber mat to stand on and have a nice work surface me I don't have this I am currently sitting in my room with my feet on the carpet and just working on my desk now this is really, really, really not recommended for anybody that works on computers because you could very easily damage the components in your laptop or desktop with uh, electrostatic discharge. Um, one little zap from that and your entire computer could be dead and you'll have to replace parts. Me, I'm just going to be incredibly careful and uh, try to not ruin my laptop because I don't have an anti-static wrist strap or any of the other stuff uh, to use. So we're just going to get started with this. So you're going to want to remove all of the screws that hold the bottom cover of your laptop on. Now usually with other laptop brands this requires splitting the laptop in half and in some cases even removing the screen. With mine you just pull that one screw and the bottom cover is not going to come off with one hand. Give me a second. Okay, so once you had the bottom cover ready to come off, you just simply lift it up on this particular laptop and set it aside. It doesn't look too particularly dirty. Now keep in mind this laptop has been running every day, all day, for almost a month. And I was really curious to see just how much dust and dirt has built up inside the cooling system of this laptop. So once you get in the laptop there will be a multitude of screws holding the cooler to the CPU and graphics chipset if they're separate, which they should be. Now 
on my particular model, sorry about the shaky camera, I'm reaching back and forth, they are numbered, as you can see, one, two, three, and four, and then it goes up to like five, six, seven, and eight. You want to remove these in the order that they are numbered, and when you reassemble the laptop, you want to tighten them down in the order they are numbered. Most laptops, I don't think, do this, but this is one of Dell's uh, precision workstation lines, so they really went through the trouble to make sure that everything was nice and easy. get to and work on. So just get these out. Five. Six. and seven. Once you have all the screws loosened, you make sure they're completely undone. You're going to want to unplug the CPU cooling fan from the motherboard. Leave that like so. And then, very, very gently, you want to pull up on the CPU cooler itself. Now, if I remember right with this one, there's a bit of a trick to getting it off. So I'm going to have to put the camera down for a second, and let me get it loose. Alrighty, guys, so once you have the all of the uh, screws undone from the cooling system, you simply just lift it out, like so. You can see the gold thermal paste that I had on the CPU and GPU itself. So next thing you're going to want to do is set the cooling system aside. And you're going to want to grab a paper towel and rubbing alcohol and clean these off. So one second. Alrighty guys, so once you have the CPU and GPU cleaned off as well as the heat sinks, which, like I said, what you're going to want to do is take the rag, dab some rubbing alcohol on it, and just rub these off. The alcohol will not affect the system board or anything. Uh, it evaporates extremely fast, and it's extremely good at removing the residue of the thermal paste. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if your laptop is like mine, it will have these... Um, what they call thermal pads on it. Do not damage those uh, and do not remove them. What these are for are the four right there are for the memory chips for the GPU. This has one gig of DDR3 dedicated memory. Um, I'm guessing Southbridge right there. Uh, you don't want to remove those and replace them with thermal paste because the thermal paste will not be thick enough to accommodate the uh, space in between the cooler and the memory chips um, and you will end up frying it out so don't damage those keep them on there they're there for a reason if anything you might be able to get replacement thermal pads but even that usually isn't needed but once you have these both cleaned up you're going to want to take your brand new thing of thermal paste, or in my case, a, well, yours might not be brand new, but mine is, and uh, you're going to want to open it up, which I'll be back with you in a second, and then you're going to want to apply about a pea-sized dot to every space that that has to make contact with. No more than a pea-sized dot, because when you put this back on, it's going to compress the thermal paste, and it's going to squeeze out and cover practically every inch of where it needs to. Uh, you don't need a, a whole lot to go a long way, so I'll be right back. Alrighty, now as you can see, I've applied a very thin layer to every inch of this chip, uh, or chips as you may call them. 
and an easy way to do this is if you had a credit card you could spread it around the pea size dot I just used the tip of my thermal paste tube to kind of spread the thin dot around a bit so that it covers every inch now usually you don't have to do this because this well when you press it down will spread out and cover it but I like to cover my bases and make sure that the chip is covered in the first place um, and the thinner the layer is the better uh, conductivity it will have you don't want a thick layer because a thick layer of it will actually insulate the heat and make the chip run warmer so as thin as you can get it the better and you want to make sure it covers the whole die of the chip um, now all that's left to do is reapply the cooler and strap it down and plug in the fan and I'll be right back alrighty so once you have the cooler in place follow the steps on the screws here if they have numbering follow the numbering and you don't want to tighten down one all at once at the same time what you want to do is tighten it down little by little and go in an X pattern pretty much you want to do one two three four one two three four one two three four until it's completely snug and even because if you tighten one screw down all the way before you tighten the rest you're more likely to push the thermal paste off to one side uh, with uneven pressure so you want to make sure that you tighten down all of the screws evenly um, at the same time so that it goes down with even pressure and doesn't mess up the thermal paste so you want to do that on both the CPU and the GPU coolers if you have to uh, most laptops do but laptops with APUs won't so once that's all installed and tightened down all you have to do is replug in the CPU fan put the cover back on which I don't seem to know what I did with mine and uh, we'll give it a power up and make sure everything works and then we'll check the temperatures now with the overclock sitting at idle the GPU is about 53 Celsius 54 and the CPU sat about the same temperature so I'm looking to see if there will be a reduction in temps now this is without the CPU fan kicking on this is just passive cooling the CPU fan kicks on about 60 Celsius and really ramps up about 70 to 80 Celsius so uh, that'll be what I'm looking for is to see how much the temps change under load and just idle so I'll be back in a bit okay so we have it all back together it's plugged in everything's hooked up got the little three dollar Chinese mouse hooked up so let's open it up and see what happens one second sorry about that mine the incredibly dirty screen needs to be cleaned uh, but let's go ahead and power it on we'll be looking for a post all right we have a post let's let it boot up into windows check the temps as you can tell the fan's not even running it won't run until this thing heats up quite a bit for anybody wondering the specs it's a core i7-620M uh, dual core with hyper threading rated at 3.3 to 3.5 gigahertz it's got 8 gigs of RAM an MSATA 30 gig SSD and a 500 gig western digital uh, Scorpio Blue Series hard drive of which Windows is installed on. Also has a 1920 by 1080 uh, matte finish screen as well which makes this thing really nice for work or for games. The GPU in it is a Quattro 880M DirectX 10.1 card so any DirectX 11 only games won't run but I guess it's a sacrifice you have to make but as you can see it's got the Intel Core i7 inside so here we are on the desktop we're waiting for the temperature monitor to come up
And Steam's trying to update. Go away, Steam. Boot up could be a little slow because it it needs to be defragged and uh, up until about an hour ago it was running uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 10 all night. We have the CPU monitor plus my overclocking program's got to start up as well as uh, the temp monitor which is Hardware Info 64. There we go and we are at So, right now, it's not going to focus, we're at 40 Celsius on the CPU and 39 on the GPU. Now, we'll uh, wait for this to sit here for a bit and warm up, and I'll let you know what the temps get to. Alright, so, it's been a bit. It's been sitting here running, and, um, just been watching some Naruto to give the GPU a bit of a workout. It's 720p, so, it's alright. But uh, you know, the temps are a little lower instead of like in the 60 Celsius. We're sitting 51 on the CPU, 53 on the GPU without the fan running at all. Hasn't kicked on a single time, which is most definitely better than it's usually done. But uh, yeah, so I call that a success. System works, temps are a bit lower. So awesome. I guess you can always depend on your uh, Arctic aluminum. Uh, Arctic silver servo paste. So cool. Alrighty, guys, I will talk to you later.